identities they have to uh, uh, perform in a way and all the obligations they have to certain groups in their social life. I think The Wire is a very good example. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think another key aspect of this is um, not only the amount of time that viewers spend with a character, but also that actors do. You know, and actors, a lot of actors have said that, you know, when you're playing a well-written character in a serial television show, you are living with this person and you come to know them in a way that you never do in a film. You know, in a film, you know, the best actors will, you know, people say you inhabit the part and, and things like that. But, you know, you're not playing that part for that long, comparatively. You don't see your own personal cha physical changes over time then get manifested in the character changes. So, you know, the way in which, you know, you yourself age or maybe, you know, you sprain your wrist and suddenly your character has sprained their wrist and that becomes sort of this embodiment, um, very different in a sort of self-contained narrative than an ongoing narrative. And, I mean, I think that, I mean, that, those elements may be most pronounced in daytime soap operas where there are some actors and actresses who literally have spent their entire lives on a show who, you know, have, you know, were a child actor who grew with this part and, you know, their, almost their entire lives, um, professional lives, have been documented by this one narrative. Um, I was wondering what happens to the television experience and to the status of the television text when these orienting paratexts are directly embedded into the episode itself. Yeah. I'm thinking of a show like Damages, for example, yeah. which is later seasons. I mean, it has a very complex temporal frame. It yep. doesn't really have standalone episodes. And you would have yep. this ticker appear on the screen as the episode was being aired. Yeah. So they would give you clues or they would say the protagonist is referring to this. This is an allusion to that. Oh, uh, okay. So I have. Yeah. What happens to the status of the television text, but then is the definitive TV text? And to what extent does that kind of orienting paratext even close down further orienting paratext by somehow anchoring? the series into a definitive authority. Yeah. It's interesting. I didn't know I, I didn't know the damages did that. I, I only watched the first two seasons of that. Um, I mean there are examples of another example of that there was a um, in the last I think three seasons of Lost, ABC would air the um, each episode twice each week. You know, the first on the sort of debut night and then the, so, uh, you know, in a given year, maybe on Wednesday night, is re the regular Lost, and then the next week, on Tuesday, they'll show the last week's episode enhanced with little pop-up clue, you know, pop-up uh, um, annotations in this way that are very much meant to orient us, provide cultural references, provide references to other episodes and things like that. So I'm wondering, my, my guess is with damages is that that was a similar thing, that it wasn't in the sort of normal viewing of the show, but it was an enhanced viewing of the show. I'm not sure, though, because, because I never heard of the, the enhanced version as being, being the norm. Um, I think that, you know, like what often happens with, with those types of sort of official annotations is that fans push back against them and say either... This is obvious we all know this in this sort of masterful way. Um, or they'll critique them and say, you know, they're completely missing the point here, you know, of this. You know, it's a, it's a simplified reading of, of the show to say that this is a reference to this other thing. It's like, because they're not thinking about this, this, and this. Um, and there's a real um, sense that those types of um, annotated versions are for amateurs. You know, so I think that that, that is a, f a frequent uh, reaction in fans is that they don't. Th there's a rejection a lot of times of official paratexts in that way. You know, they like the the official paratexts that are sort of um, expanded storytelling, but they don't like the things that are annotating and trying to orient uh, that which is there. I've not seen a show in which the kind of definitive version is framed as the annotated version. But it may, I mean, maybe, maybe there are instances, but I haven't seen them. I'm really sorry, but I'd like to present as a, as a showrunner of the end of <laughs> to, uh, well, this and our schedule and, and your work, of course. I know we could, we, could, uh, we could listen to you the whole day and we could thank you the whole day, but we have still another session. So maybe in 15 minutes we could, we could continue with the, with the other topic, which will be in several ways connected. Yes, so definitely. Great. Okay.